Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is your girl Mitzi, and this is Mitzi. Let's think about it today. I have a special guest here, Sasha, and we are going to be thinking about sacred intimacy. Ooh, so Sasha, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Sure. Hello, everyone. So my name is Sasha, <laughs> and <laughs> I play many roles. So whatever the moment asks for, I really do feel that we're in a world where we always wear many hats. And so my role is I'm an intuitive coach most of the time in my professional life. So I work with people around their purpose, embodying self-love, finding their inner sacred union and connecting sacred intimacy to everything they do, which is what we're going to talk about today. I also am an artist, a poet, an actor, a writer, and I just feel like I am a student of life and I Mm -hmm. am here to learn from you really, truly. Even when I speak, most of the time, I'm just tapping into whatever guidance is being given to me. So it's never really me speaking. It's something that's going through. And I am so grateful that you, Mitzi, want to play with me and discover what it is that we, (laughs) what it is that we create during this conversation. Oh, yes. Believe me, I am super eager for this conversation. I was talking to my husband this week and I was like, I'm excited for Monday's conversation because I was reading your website. And it looks so intriguing. I mean, you're a person with multiple hats on, you know, it's constantly switching them off. Call you the Mad Hatter, right? (laughs) You know, but it's interesting to me how you really help people with reconnect with themselves, you know, Mm -hmm. and I don't do that with people one-on-one. I just don't feel that I can do that personally. I don't know. Maybe I'm just afraid. I don't know. But seeing you and reading the testimonies off of your page, it was really nice to see how you were really able to open people up. And I feel that since we live in a society with that are closed minded, you know, even sexually and mentally and physically and just overall just closed up. How do you really tap into that when it comes to other people? You know what, Mitzi, I feel like it comes down to trust Mm. and presence within yourself, which is what really we're going to talk about. And you'll notice my voice just changed mm-hmm. because when I was talking about myself, right, I was like, oh, this is what I do. And I did a, like, there's that kind of glossy super, and it, there's nothing wrong with it. Right. But that is kind of like this costume. So I wear this costume and then I wear that. And of course, these things are necessary. We live in a world where we play certain roles. You can be a wife and a mother. And again, a coach, a podcast host, many things. And that is not what what you are. Mm-hmm. That is not what you are. And so to answer your question as to how I open people up to being authentic first with themselves, right? And then letting me witness them is, well, first and foremost, that is the work I do with myself. So truly, truly, I believe that it is not a science. It is an art of embodying that authenticity and presence and being so incredibly vulnerable in sharing the truth of your heart that the person in front of you, they won't feel any kind of threat They won't feel any kind of judgment. They won't feel any kind of possible kind of fear around being honest with what is within them because they will witness you doing that for them. You are showing up as a vessel. And I'm not saying this, you know, like I am a vessel for this. No, no, but really, truly a vessel for my own, my, right? My love for this world and for the people in it. And all I want to do is to reflect that within someone else. And so I think, I think, right? I don't know, but I think that because I show up with a true desire to love, like really, I really just want to love, you know, and have people experience that love within themselves. So I guide them, right? To connect to what they are, to discover really, truly who they are, right? So what they are is is a one thing and then who, right? They embody that as, and then what it is that they really desire from that place of authenticity and alignment and union, they feel my like earnest, like just excitement to see them stand in their power. I think from the first moment we meet. And so I never found it hard to have people open up to me because I genuinely see people and you right now I'm looking at, like I'm looking at the camera, but I see you, I just see you as like limitless and infinite. And I want to, I want to see that. Like, I want to see more of that. I want you to see more of that. And anything I say to you will come from that intention. And I know that you will feel it. So 
how can you not right want to go into your limitlessness and infiniteness and how can you not want to discover all of the things you thought right it was dangerous to express or you would be judged for or because i'm here to tell you the things that we're most scared to reveal are the things that will magnetize everything you've ever wanted mm-hmm. and that is why it's so difficult because not many people will take that step and say i am willing to sacrifice all of my masks all of my shields that i was told i had to hide behind because the world is out there to get me and i have to fight for it i'm willing to sacrifice that belief to discover the truth of how deeply loved i am and because i know that that is true for me i think i can't help but just uh, yeah like exude that when i meet people so they don't sometimes they might think i'm crazy but they're <laughs> they're thinking that from a place of i wonder if there is some truth to this craziness <laughs> so, and then we just open that box within them to see that indeed that craziness lives within them and that craziness equals authenticity self love and self worth that has always been there they just never thought they never thought they were allowed to open it up without suffering and without fear and without feeling like they have to you know fight for it like it literally is right here right now and mm-hmm. yeah so <laughs> this is a long answer to your question but i feel like that's how i get people to open up you just have to embody that which you believe in and i i do feel that that's all i do so yeah and yeah. i guess kind of like we were talking before i started the recording how do you handle when people misinterpret your genuineness you know, yeah. because like I said, that happens to me a lot mm. and it's frustrating because they can't <laughs> accept my authenticness. Yeah. So they put it in a category that makes sense for them. Yeah. And, and it whitewashes everything that's authentic about me, about myself. And I feel that is an issue that people have. So how do you deal with that per se? It's interesting you say this. Hmm, I made you think. Welcome to the thinking show. No. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, yeah, it's a very, it's a very good, you know, contemplation as to how, right? Without again, without making people feel like they're wrong to assume whatever that they want to assume, right? Again, we don't ever want to assume anything bad, but we're habitually, right? We're trained to judge, to assume, and to, like I just said, protect ourselves, mm-hmm. right? And so whenever people assume, let's say that I'm not being genuine or they think that I'm fake or that I'm too much. I know it comes from fear. I know it comes from a belief system that they had no choice in, but they live in, right? Where they think that if somebody's open and just like really wants to get to know them and talks about love and God and the divine. And they're like, it's okay for people to think I'm crazy because yeah, I absolutely appear to be crazy. I understand that. And here's the thing. There is a distinction between being normal, right? And being natural. I don't want to be normal. I want to be natural. And I know that that could come out as crazy because most of our world lives in a fake, very unnatural, right? Very unnatural. Very very natural way, but it's a normal way to live. Yeah. Right. And so I just kind of, I show up as I am. And when people assume this, this is how I think about it. (laughs) I don't try to convince them. Otherwise I show them otherwise. So when we start having a conversation, right, I know how to speak about the subject I speak about from different perspectives. I can talk about it academically. I can talk about it philosophically. I really do have the expertise and the knowledge and the training to, you know, to actually go into the subject without just being like, la, la, la. However, however, I believe that if someone really doesn't trust right? How, like you said, you show up and people just say like, you're being fake. If somebody really doesn't trust that, I'm going to say this with love. They're not ready for me. Like they're not ready. And that's good. That's good. We're not meant to, in that moment, co-create whatever it is that maybe I wanted to. It's not my, I want, right? It's whatever is right for them. It's not the right time. So, and, or their path is just, and mine aren't aligned. However, even that, right. Even that misalignment and somebody saying, oh, you're, oh, you're just what fool. Yeah. Even that is aligned because I know that I'm not right. And all I can do is that's okay. So for my ego is a beautiful lesson to just let go and let God, right. And be like, okay, so this person did, don't believe me. That's okay. Right. I know the truth and this is what it is. So it's reaffirming what I stand for. And for them, it's an invitation to feel different energy and perhaps 
Maybe it's going to happen, maybe not, but perhaps a couple of weeks later, they'll just tap in and they'll feel just a little bit more openness because they received a little bit more love for me than someone, you know, than most people in their life. And they will start contemplating, maybe that girl wasn't crazy. Maybe I really am that awesome. You know, <laughs> that's my hope, right? And that's my hope. And again, if you think I'm crazy and I'm too much, you're absolutely right. We're not meant to work together. <laughs> I love, I love that response it's, it's yeah. perfectly stated I couldn't imagine a better way to for anybody to say it I think my next question would be what really inspired you to start this journey to mm-hmm. start not only helping yourself but helping other people get aligned and understand really what's going on with themselves so that they can have that real intimate relationship with themselves because once I started that journey it did take a lot but I realized it was important for myself, you know, to gain that peace and to gain that clarity for me to finally feel like I'm somewhat getting aligned because I feel like it's an everyday process to become one with your spirit and your body and your mind and everything. Cause it's an, I feel like I'm in a constant battle between the three. What was your walk? Hmm. Well, I feel like it claimed me, Hmm. you know, I really, this path And I still don't really have a way to, you know, describe exactly what I do in one, you know, sentence. I'm just like, I'm so beyond right now in my way of living labels and whatever boxes. However, the path of intuitive coaching, which is the container of what most of the work that I do found me because I was pretty much put in a position where I said, I really, I I really do want to be creative and I want to, you know, be authentic in my expressiveness. And I really do want to like help people. However, I also know that the only reason, right, I'm called to do it is because I know that the most important thing in this world are people living in it who are fully connected to their heart. And I was lucky to grow up in a household that really embodied in my parents embodied love and I felt it and then I witnessed that most of the people around me that I meet and that I I see now they haven't had that experience of true inner intimacy right true understanding that you are absolutely divine and I did and so when I recognized that that was very rare and I was very lucky to have it I also wanted to understand well how is it that I have it And how can I cultivate it? Because all I really care about is feeling that way all the time, right? And I know that most people seek that. They just don't know it, right? We all want one thing. We want the freedom to be with complete peace within ourselves and feel that love for ourselves so that we can share it. However, right, in our relationships and the work we do, we want to feel like we matter. However, only from a place of this is who I really am. Like, this is who I am. I know this and I love it. And so I was brought into the path. First, I thought of being a you know, like a psychologist, as most people do, social worker, all of these roles. I was also an actor, right? So I was trying to merge. How do I be creative in this? And, and then I discovered life coaching. It was new at the time. This was eight years ago. It was a new profession. And I thought, oh, this was invented, right? So that we could have a new paradigm of supporting people through spiritual awakenings without it being spiritual, right? It's not about, uh, are you a spiritual person? No, it's, of course, it's spiritual because your spirit is deeply involved, right? Like you said, it's about marrying your spirit into your body and understanding that your mind is only a vehicle to bring forth whatever's coming through. And so, and your body, right, is the vehicle that delivers it to the world. And so understanding the mechanism of it absolutely matters to every single human being, whether they're on spiritual journey, quote unquote, or not, we're all on a spiritual journey. However, I did not want it to be only spiritual or only mental. And I wanted it to be work that was about the person finding their truth, because that's how I have always lived my life. Like, I don't care about dogma or religion, even I want to know what the truth of my heart is saying. And then I will be called to follow a certain teaching or so the path found me. I was, I literally ended up working as a social worker with uh, at risk youth at when I was acting and I discovered this desire to do more one-on-one work and holding space. And then I discovered life coaching and I started training in that discipline. And from then on, it was literally just like, 
oh, oh, you know, it's like, oh, that was like in a candy store. So I, you know, I went and, and I started studying philosophy and I started studying psychology and I started kind of bringing tools into my toolbox. But most of the time it was really, truly just the joy of understanding how we all absolutely come to this world equipped to create whatever we want. But the only thing standing in our way is our belief that we can't. Mm. And so it's understanding how, right, to help someone witness it and then not fight it, but witness it from a place of, ooh, this challenge of not believing in myself, not knowing who I am, not trusting my intuition. This challenge is there to help me become more embodied in what I already am. And that is the one that is here to create whatever my heart desires. But it's the witnessing it that is the key. It's the witnessing from a place of, I already am that. And so again, to answer your question, it found me, but it's always evolving. Like every single day, I'm like, okay, what teaching, what, you know, what am I bringing in? And it coming from a self full desire to expand my own awareness, right. And to feel fulfilled and, and excited to live every single day. And this is what brings me the most joy is witnessing other people live theirs. <laughs> so it's just, and of course, reclaiming our sexuality is, you know, a big part of it. And we'll talk about that, but it comes as an add on, but it's also the foundation foundation of everything <laughs> as I have discovered in my work. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so from my understanding, it, you really do help a lot. And I was going to ask you, how do you really help people with understanding intimacy outside of the sexual realm? And mm. I think you kind of just already stated it. You know, mm. you really do just help people see themselves in a different way where they end up learning that they can have an intimate relationship that is outside of the sexual realm without them even thinking that anything's sexual because I feel that a lot of the times people associate intimacy with sexuality you know and I don't think that's always the case like yeah it's a spectrum it's there but it's not the whole ideal you mm -hmm. know so mm -hmm. it really sounds like you really help people reconnect with themselves in a different way that they learn to love themselves again because that's what I was reading on your site that you mm -hmm. were trying to help people love themselves and find their new gifts and find the the stuff that they didn't even know that they had within themselves and is that right am I in the right path uh, you are absolutely and, and Mitzi I want to say that you know what th this is the thing you're absolutely right however the reason, I think the reason we, you know, we're, well, sexuality is such a, you know, such a big thing is because we misunderstand it. Oh, and thank you. yeah, and we misunderstand what it actually offers us beyond mm -hmm. the sexual act, right? And so what I think we need to distinguish is not so much sexuality versus intimacy, it's sacred intimacy with oneself, which absolutely involves sexuality. However, the distinction is between sexuality and having sex, right? And so those two things, like you could have, you could be having sex with someone, you could be in an act of sexual intimacy and be completely detached, right? There is no intimacy. Yeah. You're not connected to your sexuality and you're actually completely numb. And so I think a lot of trauma comes from, we know, right? We can see it in the world. Like there is a disconnect between how we express ourselves physically and how we feel in our hearts, right? And so sexuality actually in many, well, ancient traditions and it's still, and now too, we can talk about Tantra, right? It's what it is, is sexual energy is the essence of creation, right? So we're always creating. And so in this moment, you and I, we have images in our head, we have feelings, we have, there's energy moving, right? And so that is our sexuality that and as women especially right we are so connected to our wombs or so disconnected from our wombs and so we sometimes feel completely asexual because we have never been taught how to harness sexual energy and feel safe within it mm. right and feel accepted without attaching it right to being sexy or having sex or again it's all about aligning your heart your sexual energy your mind and your body right and so your nervous system rewiring your nervous system to trust your sexual energy which expresses itself when you cook when you take care of your dog, like truly. And so when we think about the universe, right? The big bang, 
the big bang would be the big orgasm mm -hmm. and the feminine, which I work with the feminine, the masculine energy. I talk about that because it helps people understand better, right? Mm -hmm. That intimacy again, sacred union, sacred sexuality is about merging within you, merging those energies within you. Now you will express one more than the other, right? For example, I'm much more feminine than masculine. However, I have a masculine energy inside of me. And so merging and learning how to cultivate it and have a healthy expression of it, which is not what we see in the world, right? So that we can embody that union. And that's how we create a different world, right? It's people who are in harmony with their sexuality and feeling safe and empowered and know that they can use it for good. And it is not limited to their partners. It is not limited to their sexual experience with themselves. It is absolutely linked to how they know, trust, and express the truth of their wholeness. Mm -hmm. And it's absolutely divine when you witness it in someone because it will never feel aggressive. It will never feel, you know, scary. And I'll say more, our desires, like our sexual desires are often, and this really like sexual desires, right? If you have a fantasy and you feel like, oh no, what is that? Yeah, They come from that subconscious mind, right? But they come because of a lot of repressed mm -hmm. yearning to connect to something bigger than us. So we will actually create scenarios that make us feel like we can connect to something and that will express itself sexually. And we will often repress it and thus disconnect even further from our intuition and our hearts because it scares us. We don't know how to handle it. And the world teaches us that it's scary and it's, you know, it's offensive. And of course, right. And so of course, because it's a great power. So with great power, grace comes great responsibility. So we get to now unlearn all of that crap that keeps us stuck and scared of our own selves and then tap in and align. And again, rewire our nervous system to handle the sexual energy and to know how to connect it to our spirituality and then transform our mindset around it so that we can act in alignment with our true heart desires. And it's not ego-driven, right? It's not just an impulse and it is connected to your heart. And from that place, it can only serve. And mm -hmm. you know this, it can oh only God. serve. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love the way that you break it down and you explain things. Sometimes I think of these things in my mind and I swear I make them more complicated in my mind than what you are able to say it because the way that you're able to express it is so clear cut and straight to the point and you give me the visuals and I'm a visual aid person so I'm able to visualize it I'm able to see everything that you're saying and it makes perfect sense it makes perfect sense and I do think that once we as individuals realize that understanding that we grew up in and understanding that we accept for ourselves and the understanding that the world is trying to portray onto us, then we can really understand what it really means for us as an individual. Because like you said, we kind of interpret things differently depending on all of those things. So I really appreciate that. And I guess um, to start wrapping up the show, what would be some good advice that you may have for me, myself, or even the audience? So even if it's one person in the audience that's possibly listening and that they, they need to hear the, this advice to help them, what would that advice be? Yeah, well, you know, speaking, if we're speaking of sacred, especially sacred intimacy, and just again, coming back to this visual, right, of witness yourself as the whole, whole world, right, that has a masculine energy, it has a feminine energy, and it's a dance, and then witness yourself dancing with the world, right? So then you express yourself, let's say as a woman, right? You have a young child. We just spoke about it earlier. How can you be in harmony with your life where in this moment, right? You're like, well, I'm deeply feminine. I feel embodied, right? In my femininity. How can I feel more supported in it? And also where do I feel disconnected from this creative desire that I have? Because, okay, so I will, I will say right now, simple, right? The feminine is movement. It's flow. It's change. It's transformation. It's oh, look at me, touch me, love me, give me, ah, taste me. And the masculine is, let me hold you. Let me clarify you. Let me ground you. Let me lead you. Let me witness you. It's mm -hmm. the consciousness. It's the everything. Mm -hmm. And so being able to tap into both and knowing where you're resisting, 
right, will absolutely transform not only your relationship with yourself, which is the most important thing, it will then, right, this is where you start, you will then evoke that kind of relationship with your partner, with whatever community you're working with, right, with the world, you will show up as an embodiment of that divine union. And so you will evoke whatever the world needs. And if you show up in that moment of deep femininity, however, you have that feeling of, I also have the support and the clarification and the guidance of my masculine and your partner will feel it. They will most likely show up as that for you even more. So it's like you're constantly dancing. You're not trying to balance. You're dancing with how life is asking you to express your truth so that it serves you and everyone else, but it starts with you. So whenever you have a question of like, how do I fix this? Right. How do I become more confident? How do I feel better about my body? How do, how do, how are you feeling within yourself about this thing you're trying to fix out there right now? And where are you rejecting, ignoring, blaming, judging, like literally numbing a part of you? That part of you needs, like right now, needs your attention, needs your full, 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 full presence, and will tell you what, what it actually requires. You can actually sit with yourself and move into your body with your like inner eye, right? Just like visual. That's what I do with people. I There's nothing I can say, right? That will show you the truth of what you are. You need to experience it, which is everything. What I do is experiential. So we'll actually go into your body. We will tap into your heart, your womb, your bones, your flesh, and you will feel where you are ignoring yourself, where you're not listening to yourself and what is it asking you. And from that place, you will know exactly how to show up in your life so that it reflects to you what you want, right? But you start to create it from within and then you show up and it's not, by the way, the law of attraction, and that's absolutely true. And it only works when you start attracting and magnetizing whatever it is that you need from yourself. It's not, I'm trying to get the car I want. Do you, you don't want the car. You want to feel aligned and empowered. And that's why we start within. And then if the car somehow supports that, yeah, we will talk about the car, right? But, but most of the time, it's not about the thing we want, right? It's how we want to feel when we get the thing. Mm -hmm. And it always starts with that dissonance, feeling dis disembodied and removed from yourselves because you feel like you don't know who you are and you don't know how to get to know yourself. And also you are confused about what you actually are. You have an idea of yourself and that idea is leading you, but that is not what you are. You are actually looking at the idea, doing its thing and just thinking, what? <laughs> right? So just know that whatever ideas you have is not what you are, but the truth of you is always here. So it's just one breath away. Awesome. I'm, I'm going to wrap up because I can go on forever, as you can tell. But <laughs> yeah, you are so good, Sasha. Believe me, you will get an A plus in my book. You are perfectly fine. You know, <laughs> good. And ladies and gentlemen, anybody who's listening, if you want to feel that or you want to reconnect with yourself or you're trying, if you're having a hard time figuring out what really is going on within you reach out to Sasha you can find her on mitzithinking.com you'll find her beautiful picture under special guest you'll find a link to her website you can book a, a call with her reach out to her because just this conversation alone has been very enlightening and has been helping me clarify the little thing the little questions within myself that I know I needed that I didn't even know I was going to get the answers from today you know you never know where you're going to get it from so go check her out she's going to really help you because she has helped me already and it's you're gonna have a great time trust me trust me <laughs> till next time y'all bye